Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone's doing well. Today I'm going to talk about the five top projects that I'll be collecting and all the way until 2024, next bull cycle, preparing myself for what's to come in this space. If you're watching this channel, I know you're excited just like I am. Things, big things will be happening in the crypto space and I'm happy that you guys are here along for the ride and we're early. When people start FOMOing in and, and you know trying to buy at the top, this is when we'll be releasing some of our bags and making those crazy gains. So this video is about the top five projects that I'll be accumulating mainly um, end of this year, all through the bull cycle of next year and the year that follows. So if that's something that interests you, stay tuned. If you like the video, please hit that like button. Definitely gonna help the channel grow. And if you wanna see more of my content, subscribe to the channel. So let's get into my five favorite projects right now. All right. Before we get into that, I just want to take a look, quick look at the market market sentiment right now, currently at 50. So, you know, last week when I made this video or I made a video, we were in the fear. Now we're ticking up to 50 and that's neutral. So things are, are, are calming down. People are less scared and things are moving upwards. You know, that's what we want to see right now. And I'm very bullish. And um, I know a lot of people that are definitely that you believe in crypto, you believe in Web3 and where this space is going, the amount of money that will come into this space next couple of years is exciting time. And we're at the forefront of that. Uh, you know, looking at the heat map, you know, things are red. But again, it's not big drops. We're trading sideways right now. So, you know, negative half a point to two points here and there. Um, Bitcoin right now currently is at 27.4. You know, we hit a, a, a hype. You know, October 1st, we were at 28,000. I thought things were on an up and up, but we come down a little bit. It's okay, you know, opportunities. Um, keep DCAing. We got ETH, you know, still in the 1600 range, so that's good. A couple of greens. We have Sol, um, Cardano, nice, went up a little bit. XRP, um, TRX, Matic. So some of the ones we talked about in this uh, on this channel are doing pretty well. And even look at Casper. Casper's in the green as well. So let's look at the top five. These are the top five that I'll be accumulating, and I want to know how it compares to your top five. So Bitcoin is boring, and I know it's kind of your cliche, but Bitcoin moves the market. Bitcoin is the safest, I think, out of all cryptos. If you look at 10, 15, 20 years from now, which crypto I can say with some faith that will still be here, I think it'll be Bitcoin. Bitcoin will still be here, and I consider this as a 401k for me. You know, I always think that if you own 0.1 Bitcoin at some point, that could be generational wealth. Maybe 10 years from now, maybe 15 years from now. But even 0.1 of a Bitcoin, when everyone's trying to get it and no one can get it, and Bitcoins are like 10 million or whatever the case may be, I think having 0.1 of Bitcoin can change someone's life. And so that's why I've been accumulating this whole year. I've been accumulating. Um, I've had to say past couple of years, I've been only DCAing into Bitcoin. Now I'm opening it up to these other four that I'm going to talk about. But Bitcoin is, is my favorite. Um, so. Bitcoin is at twenty seven four. I think that's a good price. Anything under thirty thousand dollars, I would, you know, I will be DCAing into it, and I think it's a good idea. Um, also, Elon Musk. He recently said that all fiat is a scam. No matter if it's whatever country you're from, it's a scam because it debases, and with inflation, it just, you know, the buying power just lessens every year, every year. Um, and I wonder, it's very interesting he said that because he's going to integrate a payment system into X, formerly known as Twitter. So if he's saying fiat is a scam, is it primarily going to be crypto? Very interesting. Something to think about. Um, something to think about. And I'm pretty sure some of the projects that I'm talking about will be integrated into X. And that's only going to help propel the price of these projects. Um, and what, you know, probably led into him saying that, you know, fiat is a scam. Look at this. This is only in the U.S., but all the countries, all the other countries in the world, you're dealing with something very similar, some even worse than the U.S. But look at that national debt. That's at 33 trillion with a T, not a B, 33 trillion. And it's only just going to increase. You know, they removed the spending um, ceiling, spend it limit in uh, the U.S. So there's no cap. So we can just spend and spend and, and we'll see what happens. Um, there was a. Some drama going on this past Sunday with the government might shut down. Um, they passed something to extend it another 45 days and we'll probably be here again. But again, it just shows that the value of the dollar, your buying power is just decreasing over time. 
And Bitcoin, I think, is one of the hardest assets that's just going to help increase or save your assets, save your wealth. You invest a little bit in Bitcoin, and I'll show you a chart that's just going to show you that over time, you're not losing money, you're only gaining money. And that's the type of investment that I want to be in. Um, this is the chart that I'm talking about. This is from Charlie Bayo on Twitter, and it's the asset class total return since 2011, right? Look at Bitcoin since 2011. And if we look at a year to date, you'd be up 61.7%. How does it compare to the QQQ? You'll be up 35.1% and so on and so on. A lot of gold bugs like to say gold is the safest. It's been around the longest. It's trusted. I get it. Um, but if you compare that to Bitcoin, you'll only be up, let's see here, 1.1%. Hmm. 1.1% versus 61.7%. And that's with Bitcoin coming down and all the volatility and all of that still beats gold. So if you look at all these assets, all these investments that you probably could have invested in, the top dog is BTC Bitcoin. So that's why that's my number one. Number two is ETH. ETH is the second biggest crypto by market cap, and it's that for a reason. Everything in the crypto space revolves around ETH for the most part. DeFi pretty much is on ETH. A lot of these meme coins that you see are ERC-20 tokens on ETH. Um, and right now, it's going to be deflationary. It is deflationary, although there's not that much volume right now. It's kind of inflationary, but still nothing compared to some other L1s and other projects that I see out there. Um, they have some futures that are approved this past Monday or approved. So not spot, but futures. So, you know, and I want to say that Grayscale even applied for spot um, ETH ETF. So the sky is, is great. The sky is the limit for ETH. Again, it's one of my favorite projects. We talked about deflationary versus inflationary. Right now, again, you know, the market's kind of light, not that much money, um, but you see it's only inflationary and that's the supply change. Only, you know, less than that. That's not that bad. Overall, so far this year, over 428,000 ETH has been burnt. So I like that. Not deflationary. I'm sorry, deflationary, and it's used pretty much. And I could see a price of, you know, something 6,000, 8,000, 10,000 for ETH. I don't, I don't think that's far fetched. So I think every portfolio should have ETH. It's the second biggest crypto out there, and it's that for a reason. Um, and then also, as far as DeFi goes, look at this DeFi, it has 21 billion total value lock. 21 billion total value lock. Um, you know, they have some issues as far as gas fees and being slow and they have l2s to help scale but i think with upgrades coming up and they can solve that issue sky's the limit for eth again we talked about some of the future etfs that's some of them right there it's about one two three four five six six of them um so again eth is my second favorite third is something that was termed the eth killer and it's solana and solana's got some bad flack i talk about this project a lot on this channel I still believe in Solana. I think Solana is probably the closest to being, a, you know, not an ETH killer. I don't think anything can kill ETH right now. ETH is too big, but Solana's up there. It's more of a centralized, depending on who you ask. You know, the NACO uh, coefficient's about 32, which makes it decentralized, but backed by VCs and all of that, I get it. Um, but it's fast, and there's some adoption. There's a lot of adoption. It's preferred amongst these institutional investors. Now, um, the price has come down a bit. You know, it was affiliated with FTX and it took a big hit when that happened. And a lot of people were saying the reason it got over 200 was because of shenanigans by SB, you know, SBF and FTX. But it's still around. It's still around and people are very interested in. In fact, um, as far as institutional investors, Solana is one of the ones um, people are very or as far as institutions, they're really into it. According to this article by Decrypt, it says Solana has emerged as the most loved altcoin among institutions with 27 weeks of inflows and only four weeks of sell offs. Its partnerships with financial institutions like Visa and its ability to offer fast and cheap payments have contributed to its success. Additionally, Solana latest token, Sol, has experienced a 20 percent increase in price over the past week. Um, not to mention they, um, uh, what's it, Shopify has, is using soul pay to help settle, uh, USDC. Um, these are big things. And if ever you see these contracts with the uh, Shopify and most recently this visa, the only other L1 that visa considered was Ethereum. 
So the fact that Solana is on the same breath as that and you see institutions are flocking into Solana is something that I'm paying attention to. And at this price, um, I'm definitely stacking Solana. And that's my third favorite crypto at the moment. Again, this is just another article about the visa. Now, number four is ADA Cardano. Now, Cardano's taking flack because of, you know, um, how can I say the price action is not the greatest, right? It's a pretty, pretty boring right now. They're slow. You know, you see other projects like the one I just talked about Solana. They're just moving fast and just going full throttle over the head. But there's some repercussions for that. Some, you know, some consequences. So Solana has shut down a couple of times, more than a couple of times, several times because of that. Cardano slow and steady and they've been up and running and not, I haven't heard of any hack. Um, and they're taking the scientific approach. But the future is bright for, for Cardano. You know, the last bull cycle, they hit $3, right? $3, and that's without having a DeFi, really. No NFTs. And it has all of that now. Um, and they have some other, you know, upgrades coming up in the future. So I, I think sky's the limit for Cardano. They have a great community. Um, Charles Hazerson is charismatic, good leader. And I like what they're doing. You know, they're ignoring all the noise and just building and building. You have Hydra coming up, you have Midnight, other uh, parachains, or not not parachains, side chains. Um, and could Cardano right now, L1, could it become a layer zero? I don't know. But that's exciting to me. And I like Cardano. It's been around for a long time, and it's still in the top 10. So here it goes. Uh, this article here says that Cardano, this is according to, someone did an article and asked ChatGPT what would be a top crypto to invest in, and they listed Cardano as one of them. Um, chat GBT's top crypto pick and for good reason it said the blockchain has set a new standard with remarkable uptime clocking in at an impressive 5.95 years of uninterrupted operation Cardano's, Cardano's uptime record of 2174 days is excellent the achievement is due to its reliability and scalability two critical factors in blockchain and in DeFi and again that's very important so I'm a big believer in Cardano and again, some of the things I talked about that they have coming up, um, you know, the DeFi is growing. Hydra is going to help scale, help it be much, much, much more quicker and um, secure. And then you have Midnight, which is going to help with privacy as well and other side chains. So the sky's the limit for Cardano. And at this price, under 30 cents, you're going to kick yourself. Well, I'm going to kick myself because I'm not a financial advisor for not getting into it at these prices, because I believe at the peak of the market, this is a project that can definitely hit five bucks. So something that's at 25, 26 cents that gets five dollars. That's an amazing return on investment, in my opinion. Last but not least is Chainlink. Chainlink is not the sexiest of projects, but it is vital and is needed in this space. And if I think of a lot of projects, um, you know, Bitcoin, I think, is a store of value. But one that has a lot of utility besides the ones that I've just mentioned, Chainlink is it. It's an oracle, retrieves data, real time data. And spreads it out to different blockchains, helps with DeFi, all types of things. And they just launched the CCIP. It's going to help with interoperability for different blockchains. Different dApps can communicate with each other no matter what blockchain you're on. Game changer. Game changer. Right now, seven bucks. Um, I think it's a, it's a good price. Um, again, this is one at the next peak. You're going to kick yourself for not getting into it. Again, it's the real use case. A lot of these projects are about what they can do what they can do in the future. And it's a lot of hopium and just being optimistic here is real world use case. And you see it being used all these chains, you know, your avalanche, Solana, ETH, whatever project near, they're all using um, chain link as an Oracle. They all need it. So in uh, any other Oracle is not even coming close to chain link. Chain link is, is it when it comes to this space. So you want to invest in something at the top of the space and the Oracle chain link partnerships with Swift, World Payment System, T-Mobile, um, let's say AWS, Amazon, Google Cloud, Associated Press. Um, so Chainlink is the truth. I'm all about Chainlink. So again, again, um, I talked about CCIP, just basically going to help with security and help um, different chains exchange information using CCIP. Great use case. So in closing, guys, that's what I got. Um, I am very bullish on the crypto space right now and hope you are too. Uh, right now, this is just a buying opportunity. Don't get swayed, you know, listening to people on Twitter and all the FUD that you're hearing out there. Um, you know, you want to follow the smart money. Smart money, people like Michael Saylor, people like Elon Musk, Tim Draper, people that are millionaires, billionaires, they made the money and they're still investing. 
So I'd rather listen to them and see what they're doing versus, you know, someone that I work with or a relative and they're in the same boat that I'm in. I want to follow the smart money and smart, smart, smart money says that we're very early, very early in this space. And I think sky's the limit for all of us as investors, especially if you're investing in your favorite altcoins and in Bitcoin. So guys, that's my video today. That's my top five. Let me know what you think. And let me know what your top five is. And let me know if I missed something. If you liked the video, again, please hit the like button. and definitely going to help the channel grow. And until next time, bye.